we are pretty good at ETS at measuring things very reliably, validly and fairly with multiple choice and constructive response items. What we are working towards is measuring more complex and contextualized constructs such as systems thinking, argumentation and cross-cultural competence. Because they are so complex and there's so much going on, you have to create a more complex environment in which students show that they can actually deal with all these things at the same time. In assessment design, having a very interactive system means you can have a productive conversation with the test taker and adjust the level of the assessment accordingly. What game designers do really well is build interactive experiences that create a very direct conversation with the player. Part of that engaging environment is to make sure that the player enjoys the game, obviously. One of the ways is when you accomplish and learn something. The principles of game and the assessment design are both based on learning. There has been a lot of talk about gamification versus game-based assessment. Gamification is like chocolate Crawford broccoli. You sprinkle game elements on it and now it's very exciting. If it's a boring task, it's still going to be a boring task. Game-based assessment is figuring out what are the game mechanics that are inherent to this construct so you can efficiently and meaningfully assess that as a game. ETS is making contributions to cast game-based assessment in a solid foundation. Within the Glass Lab effort, we have merged ECD, evidence-centered design, with game design frameworks. And we've coined that evidence-centered game design. In our experience with Glass Lab, we've followed two paradigms. One was based on modifications of existing games, and one was built game-based assessments from scratch. In this mod environment, we started with a really nice game, but the assessment pieces were unreliable. By stripping out a lot of the freedom and the exploration that makes a game so interesting, we ended up with a really solid assessment, but it was just an awful game. And so then we put more things that make it fun and interesting. And in the end, it, it didn't yield enough on the assessment side and it didn't yield enough on the game side to really make it worth our while. Now on the other end, we were able to design and build a new game and so things made sense all around. The drawback is now you'd have to develop all the wonderful art and all the game mechanics from scratch and so it's a much more expensive proposition, but it will pay off. What we're using is the four process architecture, a set of principles developed at ETS that separate specialized modules of the assessment engine to build reusable objects and save on the costs. We have taken two paths in our research currently, built a very immersive kind of environment where you get deeply into a particular topic, scenario or situation. We've also been looking at shorter targeted micro games. These micro games are a lot quicker and less expensive to build. Some of the questions that we're asking there is how effective can these micro games be? Are these micro games stackable? Can you have a bunch of these micro games and look at whether you get at the more complex construct through that? If you have say three or four of these micro games that target the same construct but in different contexts, can you generalize about the larger construct of say argumentation? Another place where we've made contributions is around the data side of things. As you create game-based assessments that have a more open nature, it means that you also leave a lot more choice to students to go through a game-based assessment in many different ways. And so the data is much more complex than when you get 99 questions with a right or a wrong. One of the most important contributions is the work in tying the construct of interest with the evidence that comes out at the back end. And tying that to the argument that we make about the construct is rare in the world of game-based assessment, but the foundation that makes this a worthwhile enterprise. We're not arguing that everything should be a game-based assessment. We're trying to find out what are the types of constructs where game-based assessments are really efficient, valid and reliable over more conventional measures. Those are the places where game-based assessments are going to make the most sense.